את מסנגרת על מחבלים, בני משפחותיהם. דמיינתי אותך אחרת לגמרי, גבוהה, כזאת, יותר ג'בארי. את ההאזנה ואת ה... שפה של הסתה נשארתי בבית. לא, לא, בכלל לא בקטע. כינו אותך ככה, אבל... וואלה, כן. נכון? סתה וכל מיני כאלה. כן, היו כינויים מכינויים שונים. איזה עוד כינויים היו לך? שאני בוגדת, שמאלנית, פרקליטת הסתה, הכל כמקובל. זה פוגע בך? לא, יש תקופות שכינויים כאלה מחמאה. אני תמיד קיבלתי את זה בתור מחמאה. Now, Rachel Lear Jones is the director of Advocate and joins me in the studio now. Rachel, thanks for joining me. And first of all, congratulations on being shortlisted. Thank you. Thank now, you. what does that mean? What, is, what, what have you been shortlisted for? Basically, we're contending in the documentary competition uh, for the American Academy Awards, the Oscars. And we are one of 15 films that have been uh, sort of, uh, I don't know, taken out of the, the body of work that, um, that qualified this year. Out of 150 films, they've now chosen 15 films. We are one of those movies, so we're moving toward that uh, end goal. Congratulations, and how do you feel about that? Uh, it's exciting. It's exciting. It's an exciting nod of approval from our colleagues. You know, it's still the documentary section worldwide who votes for us, and it's an incredible nod of approval. Absolutely. Now let's talk about the film, because there's, there's so much to talk about here. <laughs> uh, first of all, let's talk about Leah herself. So what made you want to do a documentary on her? Lea Tzemel is the kind of person who spoke truth to power before the term became trendy. She's been working since the early 1970s, and she'll probably continue to do so after fear makes it unfashionable. Um, she's just um, a really spirited person who uh, goes with her truth, uh, and um, is uh, she's a model. She's a model in Israel-Palestine, but she's also a model elsewhere. I think as societies are moving further to the right and civil and human rights are eroding in the world, if it's in Hungary or in Brazil or in the U.S. or in the U.K., all over the world, she's the kind of citizen that we would want to see. And how has the film been received? We know that there is a lot of controversy surrounding this because obviously, as we saw in the preview, she's... Some people are not her biggest fan, but then some people are. Is there a difference between the way she's been received internationally and the way she's been received here in Israel? She hasn't been criticized internationally, or the film hasn't been criticized the way it has in Israel. But what is the lesser known sort of story about the way things played out in this country is that we've gotten more love than hate. We've gotten more support than resistance. So the resistance has been very vocal. I, I liken this year, and it's been a wild ride. It's been a, a long year since we went, um, uh, premiered at Sundance almost a year ago. Um, you know, there's that um, film Monsters, Inc., with, the, mm -hmm. with the, the cartoon or the animated film. So the premise of the film is that they manufacture power, energy. Uh, it's an electric plant based on screams and fear. And at the end of the movie, they discover that laughter and joy is ten times stronger. And that's how we feel at the end of this wild ride. There's been a lot of screams and fear. There's been a lot of attempts at censorship. But the solidarity has been much, much stronger. And we are sort of closing this wild ride this year, um, strengthened by people here at home in Israel. Good for you. Yeah. Now, you won Doc Aviv. Now, this is a, the documentary film festival here in Israel, and mm. you, you, you won that. But there was a lot of backlash from you winning this competition, and that actually ended up in the funding being pulled. Tell me a little bit about that. So. Um, Doc Aviv is an Oscar qualifying festival. The, the, the U.S. Academy has made a beautiful move in the last few years to democratize the Academy. And they make it possible for international films and international filmmakers to access that competition by winning at a, at a festival. Doc Aviv is one of those festivals. We also won in the Saloniki and in Krakow. We won several of those. So the Doc Aviv Festival came with a really fantastic additional grant, in addition to first prize, which was in, uh, to, to, uh, to mount an Oscar campaign. So it was like we, we, we got engaged, but we also got the dowry in order to do something. Because you really can't do much with an Oscar qualification if you don't have money to mount a campaign. Mm -hmm. It's a very modest sum, but a useful sum. That's what got taken away. Uh, under right-wing pressure. It's also what got reinstated three months later under pressure from the arts community. Absolutely. So 
three months ago when we finally got the funding, we launched the, the modest campaign that we could and here we are, we made the short list. Now let's talk about the process of making this film because I can imagine that it would have been tough considering Culture Minister Miri Regev has a lot to say about the which films mm -hmm. get funding in the first place. Did you have any challenges there? Fortunately, we did not. The challenge was psychological. Uh, the environment in the last four or five years has been that that the government does not want these kinds of stories told or these kinds of narratives advanced. So we knew that we were working in a climate where people, it wasn't a friendly climate for this kind of storytelling, okay? Uh, and it backfired. We came out with a film that has been immensely successful, including here. We also won the first prize of the Israel Documentary Forum, which is sort of the equivalent of getting the ultimate recognition by our peers here at home. So it backfired, and it turned out that we actually hit exactly the right nerve at the right time because people were fed up being censored. This whole attempt to equate uh, culture and loyalty in the bill that she introduced a year ago, which was loyalty and culture, which basically said, if you don't tout the government line, then you don't have a place getting public funding and we should make a distinction between government and public. It's my tax money which I am then reclaiming as an artist working in this society. So it seems to have backfired and this film sort of you know like fell into that into that uh, moment where people pushed back people in the arts community not just documentary film plastic arts, uh, theater, pushed back and said, we, we want to reclaim some of that space. Um, but the psychological effect, so I'd say that de, de Yuri, she has not been successful in, in changing the game, but de facto she has to some extent because people internalize that sense of censorship. But it feels like, uh, I don't know, uh, jury's out on who's going to win this one. <laughs> well, absolutely. And I can imagine now since since this has become so, since Advocate has become so successful, there would have been a lot of other filmmakers who would also get inspiration from you, I could imagine, and wanting to take, wanting to write stories that they might feel might be a little bit going against the grain. Am I right? Have you had, have you had people reach out to you over this? I think that we, Israel has always been an incredible, uh, has had, uh, at least for the last 20 years, an incredible documentary community, an incredible documentary output, and her concerns are real insofar as we are the people telling truth and we're looking at a critic with a critical and honest and heartfelt eye at the reality that we're living and we're also taking some kind of responsibility for the complexities of that reality so uh, as you say in Hebrew, it doesn't come good to her. She doesn't like that, you know, and she wants, it. it's not just her. Limor Livnat, culture minister before that, was also going in that direction. I think it's wrong to put everything just on the minister of culture. She represents a mood in Israel, okay? Mm -hmm. um, I think that people pulled back ever so slightly, were concerned about whether they had the freedom to tell the kind of stories that they wanted to tell, to touch the problems that they wanted to touch. Uh, and I think that we are a fantastic example that it, it, it pays to be hard hitting, it pays to tell the truth, it, t it pays to look at yourself honestly in the mirror. Rachel, Leah Jones, you are incredible. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, good luck with the Oscar campaign. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.